Hi Roy here on my channel Roy Reads Anything talking about enjoying old books and related things and this is a bit of a roundup of stuff I've been reading um, in the past week so I finished Peyton Place Peyton Place by Grace Metalius the once shocking massive best-selling novel that was adapted into a movie a TV show and um, it's good. I really liked it. I'd give it a sort of four stars if that's the sort of thing I did. It's um, it's an odd one really because there's an awful lot of characters, lots of threads going on and what tends to happen is you get this kind of wave attack, kind of endless shocking event after shocking event after shocking event. So it's like lots and lots of revelations following different different characters sometimes you forget about a character and then they reappear and you find out what's happened to them so it's sort of in it's sort of you could see it was a sort of precursor to some of the sort of airport novels and a sort of soap opera type of approach to things um and you can definitely see why it was so so shocking at the time so me what exactly is so shocking about it compared with <laughs> well the sorts of things that happen yeah you've got Health and safety violations, armula severation, smoking, although the smoking probably wasn't shocking at the time. At the time. So there's all of that going on and it's like, you know, is there even a story in this or are they just kind of shocking us for, you know, one thing after another? And it is a bit like one damn thing after another, but there are two or three main characters where their sort of story arcs kind of hold it all together um, in a sense it's a coming coming of age story obviously it's a story about a place Peyton place uh, and that itself has a secret and the, that's actually to do with race which is interesting uh, but it'd be a massive spoiler if I said what that was all about so um, yeah and it, it isn't just grimness there's uh, you know, there's beauty, there's some lovely ways of describing the way she describes the seasons and the, the, and the passage of time is 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 uh, is really quite compelling. So, yeah, Peyton Place gets my seal of approval. It's a shocker. It is a shocker. Yeah. Looking forward to the um, sequel, Return to Peyton Place. Not sure I'd want to watch the movies and the, the screen adaptations, really. You know, clearly they drift a long way. One thing about it is it's set in the, the first one, set in the 30s and 40s. Uh, and there's actually war stuff. So it made quite a nice segue from Booktube at War, July, into Garb August when we're looking at Trashy Reads. Uh, so, yes, Peyton Place, read that. I, well, I read other things. Dr Jenny, meanwhile, she's read her... 43rd Adrian Tchaikovsky book of the year. <laughs> I haven't quite finished it yet, but... Which which Adrian Tchaikovsky is this? Um, oh, God, I never know the names of them. I just read them. Doors to Eden. Doors into Eden. Sounds good. Doors Sounds good. in the vague vicinity of Eden. The Doors of Eden. Right, OK. The Doors of Eden. And it's great. OK. Um, the 
Define. If it's anything like Elder Vase, it's hard to say too much about without yeah, giving you can't away. Yeah, say anything about it, really. Because part of the pleasure is figuring out what's going on yeah. Yeah, yeah, and the, yeah. the world building. I mean, what I would say is that it has what I've come to recognise as the classic Adrian Tchaikovsky tropes to do with non-hominid intellectual development and culture hmm okay that's what i'd say cool it's great read it you'll love it or hate it it's up to you and i suppose we we have a whole life of audio books that i never really mm. mention on here as well um so currently that includes the mysterious affair at styles agatha christie's i believe first novel certainly her first miss marple novel yeah, um, yes of course it is yeah. of course we watched mysterious affair at styles we? we watched it on the yes. telly oh you see we've got agatha christie collisions going on yeah. yes murder at the vicarage first miss marple novel Read by Richard E. Grant on Audible. That we're listening to, and that's really good. Performed by Richard E. Grant. It does say e. performed, and he does do all the voices, yeah. which is which is rather good. Then I read Superman Family, number 165. So this is a comic from 1974. They had merged together the, the individual comics that used to feature... Supergirl, Jimmy Olsen, Superman's pal, and Lois Lane, Superman's girlfriend, into this uh, sort of compilation book. And this one was 100 pages long. So uh, read that, lots of cool stuff about it. It has, uh, there's a misprint and it says Jimmy Olsen presents the Superman family, was in fact it's Supergirl's turn. So uh, she has the sort of... Um, there she is, looking at all the stories that she's going to tell us. Um, little header panels where she introduces each story, which is nice. Um, her own new story is about her getting a new job. And the whole theme of the issue is about careers and jobs and roles in life. Because she's gone to work at uh, New Athens Experimental School which has education from kindergarten through to university and she's working as a student counsellor oh, so, uh, so that's all good she, and she also battles a um, representative of an Aztec society that has persisted in secret and now wants to take over the world of course it does so uh, there's all of that then you get Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen and um, He's going to going to London on a work exchange, you see, the careers thing. Um, uh, the, the story is about his, his Superman signal watch that normally sub summons Superman in a few seconds, uh, stops working. So all the things that are happening, uh, he keeps boasting to the, the London police that you know, he can summon Superman any time and they're beginning to stop believing him because Superman never shows up. Um, and you do get obligatory, unlikely piece of British slang that no British person would ever say. <laughs> On this occasion, it's uh, a disbelieving policeman. I'm balmy in the crumpet for listening to you again, Olsen. Balmy in the crumpet. So a crumpet is a small sort of um, soft oat cake, I suppose. Um, but I've never heard it referred used as a synonym for head or brain or mind so uh yeah bar me in the crumpet in you the also crumpet. get a uh, super baby odd inclusion babies don't really have jobs and careers i wouldn't have thought um mind you that's so uh, you get crypto the super dog as well uh which is um you know, sounds a bit silly, but then we just watch Guardians of the Galaxy 3. So in effect, we spent <laughs> seven and a half hours of our lives watching talking animals, including a dog. So uh, can't really complain about crypto. Uh, Perry White, the Daily Planet editor, 
bit of a, the, the work-life balance. It's, you know, if you're including your boss in the family, I think the, you, you've got to, got to question the work, the barriers between work, work life there. Um, there he is. He's um, literally thumping the table while chomping a cigar. Bam, boff, bam goes the thumping. In my day, a reporter made news. Now let's get on the ball. I want scoops, scoops, scoops. Understand? And uh, Jimmy, Lois and uh, Clark, the most powerful man on the planet, run away from Scary Boss, who decides to... Um, he, will, he will show them how it works by getting a scoop himself that involves dressing up as a hobo to... Uh, solve a crime and along the way he loses memory and um, stuff happens. Uh, you got Lois Lane in the jungle. So uh, yeah, not a bad, not a bad issue, not a bad issue of the Superman family. But they hadn't, they hadn't figured out how to give it a letter column yet. So it's still got super female as the letter column header for, from the, the Supergirl days. Uh, so I've got proceeding with these. Um, I'm tempted to read one. Just read it. People keep saying I have a calming voice. So I've got <laughs> this idea of just, you know, if, if the world is arguably sadder than it perhaps could be, me calmly reading you a story could be a nice thing to do. It could reduce your blood pressure, could lower... So, so that could happen. Um, also, make it so, Captain. Make it so. Bringing these things to an end, not really one of my skills. Thinking about the the careers and jobs. So that's why I started reading a random sentence from a sword and sorcery book. Uh, but I'm switching that up. You're going to get a random sentence from the Crossroads Cookbook. Okay. So, Crossroads was a long running soap opera here in the UK and this tie-in book written by the creators of the show uh, came out in the 70s and it is a book of recipes and towards the end you get the professional touch by Meg there is Meg Meg Mortimer the the matriarch of the motel is about a motel although given that it has a a sort of restaurant and stuff i don't think it's really a motel as we would understand it i don't think we ever had motels no we? none of us knew what a motel was it was like that thing on crossroads um so there's a hotel there anyway um, in fact um there was recently a really good tv miniseries about um the actor portraying meg uh, called nolly on the television anyway yes so the professional touch by meg over the years Meg has kept a book of handy tips which she has collected from the various motel chefs. She calls it her disaster manual. Many of these professional hints have proved useful to Meg in emergencies when entertaining privately. And she decided to pass them on to us for inclusion in this book because she's real and she's given it to them. So I'm going to read you one of these as my way of wrapping these videos up. Um, when boiling potatoes, if they overcook and become mashy, sprinkle some crisp fried onions over the top. It adds to the appearance and taste. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was the best <laughs> red ridiculous thing ever. I must say it might be kind of Overcooked potatoes would be pretty disgusting and that would like, make them worse. Why not just turn it into mashed potato? And well... Like a normal person. <laughs> ask Meg Mortimer. Or Hazel Adair and Peter Ling. <laughs> okay, folks. <laughs> I actually will make that for tea tonight. <laughs> Mashed potato with a fried onion I'm top. I'm still expecting to get one of those jello salads after the plate and place incident. Crisp fried onions as well. Mm. Mm. There's nothing good about crisp fried onions. Right, we've, hit the, fi we've hit the 15 minute <laughs> slot. Yeah, this is meant to be to help us finish neatly. 
not unleash a whole load of well, new if madness. To, if you want to do that, then stop having such hilarious facial expressions. <laughs> just, just I reason. say. I'm just reading my book quietly <laughs> over here. Get it off.